What's going on everybody? Todd here. Today we're doing something a little bit different at the Real Truck Garage. We've got an onboard air system and a powered cooler that's going to the bed of our Tundra Overland build. The problem we have is that the factory didn't bring us any power in the back to energize our accessories. So what we did is we went out and we gathered up some stuff that you can get either online or locally. We're going to show you what we got and how we're hooking it up to bring power to the back of the bed. Hopefully this will give you guys some great ideas in case you're planning on tackling a similar project. All right, so when we pop the hood, the first thing to point out is the battery is on the passenger side. So just to keep this all efficient and simple, we're gonna do a single run from the battery to the passenger side of the bed of the truck. Now, it's also important to understand how much amperage you're gonna draw at any one point in time. The most that we'll be drawing is 40 amps. So what we're gonna use is eight gauge wire. Now eight gauge is rated for 40 amps. One other thing that I'm gonna do is protect that by wrapping it with loom all the way to the bed of the truck because loom goes a long way to keep wire protected from being vibrated against. We also in our kit for the onboard air system were given a 40 amp fuse, which is perfect for what we're doing. So we're gonna use that. Now I couldn't find a good spot that I liked on the firewall. Uh, to mount this fuse. So what I did is I just found a scrap piece of metal and made a bracket. So we mount that bracket uh, up to the firewall. There is a factory threaded hole that we can use. So we're gonna do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make the cable going from the battery to the fuse holder and then start assembling all this stuff.
Okay, now we're up underneath the truck. We're gonna go ahead and pull our wire all the way through. I'm gonna follow the frame rail all the way to the bed of the truck and go up inside the bed over top of the wheel arch and then down to the location where we're gonna be hooking it up. Also gonna be looking for a lot of nice little spaces to tie it out of the way to keep it from vibrating against uh, things that would wear on it over time. Okay, so here we are underneath the rear fender well. Now let me show you exactly uh, what we're looking at here. This right here is the outside sheet metal of the truck right behind the back tire. This right here is the bed. This is our inner fender liner. If you could see through this location right here, you would see the top of the back tire. This right here is the cable that we just ran from the front. Now I need to find a place to terminate this so that I can energize and, uh, and pull, pull power from that. So what we did is we picked up a couple of distribution blocks or bus bars. What we're gonna do is terminate this cable into this bus bar. We just need a place to mount it. Once we do that, we also need to have a place to mount this here. This is going to be our negative terminal and we need to ground that, uh, taking the cable from here going down to the frame. So what I did is I looked at uh, this bed, this is a composite bed, so it's basically made out of plastic and fiberglass. It's really strong. We also have a structural support right here. This fin is just kind of a structural support on the outside. This is where I chose to mount it. What we're gonna do is put one of our bus bars on this side of the fin, one on this side of the fin. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lift them up and show you where they're gonna be. They stop right up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna mark on the fin where the holes are for the bus bars and then just run a bolt through either one of those or through both of those and then mount it into place. So let me go ahead and pull it down, get it marked and drilled. Got the bolt going through. Over to the other side. Okay, now directly below our bus bars, there's a spot on the frame that's got four holes that already have threads in there. Those are gonna make a great place to draw ground from. So I'm gonna go ahead and scuff up one of these holes, put a bolt in there and attach a cable going up to the bus bar on the negative side. This is 
is an M8 by 1.25 thread pitch. If you're curious about the hole here. Okay, so here is our positive wire. I've already gone ahead and attached the end. Now, I always also like to keep uh, a little extra wire that I can kind of coil up in case I need to cut this in down a little bit. I've got plenty to use that with, or I can pull it back towards the battery again. I've got plenty. So this is just gonna get coiled out of the way, and this will be attached to the positive end of our bus bar. Okay, so now that we have the positive and ground hooked up to our bus bars, we're back up here in the passenger side of the bed. Now you can see where I've already kind of taped off the area where we're gonna be installing the source panel. I've also taken apart the source panel and traced the outside of it here and then the area where all the components are gonna be going through. Uh, the little black line that I've got here, that's actually what I'm gonna be cutting out. So all of this right here is gonna be open. Uh, these four silver holes I'm going to drill out so we can mount the source panel in that position. Now let me go ahead and draw your attention to the source panel and show you what we got going on here. This is our source panel and the first thing that I want to point out is this part of the panel did not come with the rest of the kit. What we actually had in this point here was another 12 volt outlet, but these 12 volt outlets are not rated to 40 amps and we need to be able to power our compressor with something that's rated 40 amps. So instead, what I did is I got a trolling motor outlet that's rated to 50 amps. That way we can have something that's dedicated for our compressor that we can plug in and we can draw power and unplug it when we're not using the compressor. I can also run an additional run to the rest of the panel. That way I can flip this on if we're not using the compressor and we have power to these points here and a voltmeter telling us how much voltage we've got going through. And I can turn it back off if I go to use the compressor. We've got a couple of 12 volt outlets and also a couple of USB ports. Okay, so the way we're gonna cut this out is that each one of these corners, I'm gonna drill a hole and then take a pneumatic reciprocating saw and connect the dots.
Okay, so here is the back side of our source panel. This part is what is dedicated for a compressor. We've got the eight gauge wire that's gonna be able to support 40 amps. That's gonna go directly down to the bus bars by itself. We are also gonna have a separate run for the rest of this. Now, the, the max that we're gonna draw on all of this stuff is gonna be about eight amps. Uh, so I've got a 15 amp fuse in here and that's gonna have its own run to the bus bars. All right, now we're ready to mount our source panel. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop our cables down through the hole. Set the source panel in place. Now, after I get done mounting it, I'm gonna go underneath the truck and attach our cables to our bus bar, which is right behind this point right here. Okay, now, just to point out again, this is composite bed material. So it's basically plastic and fiberglass. The hardware that I chose will be biting down into that bed because the holes I drilled are just slightly smaller than the hardware. So if I wanted to back it up with a little bit of extra security, I can also put a nut back behind it as well. Go ahead and hop up front and install that 40 amp fuse. Okay, now before I power this up, I need to make a quick confession. You may have noticed while I was wiring up the switch that I had my accessories and my power swapped. So whenever I first flipped the switch, nothing happened. I pulled off the source panel, noticed my error, then I put the accessories to the outside and the power to the center prong. Now I flip the switch, everything works. I've got power for my accessories. So let's go ahead and get those accessories into the bed of the truck.
Well, after a little bit of planning and picking up some parts, we were able to run power to the bed of our Overland Tundra build, which opened us up to tons of different accessories that we can run back here. What we went with was a powered cooler and battery backup, along with an onboard air system. And if you want to know more about these products, we'll go ahead and drop links down in the description for you. But we want to know what you would run in your rig, so let us know down in the comments. Hopefully we gave you guys some great ideas, and if you found the video helpful, make sure and give us a thumbs up. As always, if you have any questions, call the experts or visit us online at realtruck.com.